worst part about being addicted is the fact that most people don't know that they're actually addicted to something. For example, playing video games for many people can literally become a core part of their life without them ever intending or realizing it. You come back from school, stay on the computer until your mom calls you for dinner or something. After you're done, you go back on the computer until it's 3 a.m. Then maybe you go to bed and then repeat. You keep on playing even though you don't really enjoy the game anymore. At times, you even despise it. But you cannot stop. It's just part of you now. And what does this lead to? Depression. Let me explain. First, you need to understand the relationship between your brain and dopamine. Everyone has some kind of twisted idea on what dopamine is and what it actually does. But to keep it short and sweet, dopamine is a neurotransmitter that is behind your motivation and drive to do things. Everyone has a dopamine baseline. How high or low this baseline determines how motivated you are when not doing anything. So a high dopamine baseline would mean that you are a generally motivated and driven person. Someone with a low dopamine baseline would be your average person today. No motivation to do anything, indulge in instant gratification activities like video games or watching porn, even if they don't find that much pleasure in those things anymore. What affects where your baseline naturally sits is your day-to-day -day actions. Let's say you do something that gives you a dopamine reward, like eating a piece of chocolate or just scrolling through TikTok. What happens is that your dopamine spikes up for the moment you partake in X action, making you feel good momentarily, but then it doesn't just go back to its natural baseline, it actually dips below it. And the more rewarding the action you indulge in is, the lower it dips down. But once your monkey brain experiences that nice feeling of the dopamine reward, you start wanting more of it. And by indulging in nice and comfy activities, you basically bombard yourself with dopamine, with each time your dopamine baseline going lower and lower until, well, you become unmotivated and depressed. By trying to make yourself feel more happy, you end up doing the complete opposite. You get stuck in this hellish cycle of craving, reward, and regret. People like to express their discontentment with feeling unmotivated to do things, even though they are the only ones responsible for their own lack of motivation. Think of it as if you have a dopamine tank. Every time you pursue an action that gives you a dopamine reward, a little bit of this tank seeps out. And when you keep on indulging in feel-good activities, you end up depleting the tank's contents. So now there's no dopamine left to motivate you to do stuff, even if it's simple stuff like getting out of bed. This is how people become addicted to things. They experience that first rewarding dopamine stimuli from a certain activity, so they keep indulging in it until it doesn't become that enjoyable anymore. But since they are craving that dopamine rush, they are forever stuck in the cycle, chasing the high like a donkey chasing a carrot on a stick that he will never get. That's why sometimes you'll catch yourself scrolling on social media for hours on end, and then think to yourself, what am I doing with my life? But you still can't stop. Social media also does a really good job in exacerbating addiction. This is due to a concept known as intermittent reinforcement. To help you understand, let's take a look at an old experiment, where they took some pigeons, split them to two groups, and then put them in a box that had a lever and a food dispenser. For the first group, they hit them with continuous reinforcement. Every single time that pigeons pressed the lever, they were rewarded with some food. For the second group of pigeons however, they tried intermittent reinforcement. The pigeons that pressed the lever would only sometimes get the food. This resulted in the pigeons of the second group to end up pressing the lever more often than the other group of pigeons who were rewarded every time they pressed it. So what do these pigeons have to do with anything? Well, you, good sir, are the pigeons. When you are scrolling through your feed, most of the stuff you see you couldn't care less about, but occasionally you strike upon that one piece of content that you really like. Maybe one of my videos for example. This leads to you wanting to keep on scrolling even more in hopes to experience the dopamine reward that that great piece of content gave you before. So you basically fall into the same hellish cycle we discussed before. But luckily there is a workaround because all of this dopamine baseline stuff works the other way around as well. By performing activities that are not enjoyable at all in the moment, your dopamine baseline rises. This is what people praise things like cold showers. It's not the cold showers making you feel better per se, but it's the pain associated with it. I previously discussed something similar to this in my comfort zone video that you should watch, it's pretty good since I made it. But to summarize, doing stuff that is uncomfortable but not too uncomfortable to the point that it's harmful is very beneficial
beneficial to your mental health. In the science world, this is called hormesis, and it's the idea that small amounts of stress can actually be good for you, as long as they're not overwhelming. That's why something like doing push-ups, going for a run, or taking cold showers is very effective in improving one's mental health. So if you're gonna take away one thing from this video, I need you to remember this. Easy choices, hard life. Hard choices, easy life. If you manage to internalize this philosophy and include it in your daily life, yeah, you're pretty much set to go. If this video has helped you in any way, make sure to like and comment so that I can reach as many people as possible. You can even share it with a friend that you think might need it. Unless all your friends are Tibetan monks, I'm sure most of them are gonna benefit from this video. Alright, take care.